Yo guys, what's going on? It's Lockdown Stash. I'm Tarek. Thank you for tuning into this video. So today we're going to be discussing South Korean film, The Swordsman. Now, not the most original uh, title. I'll give it that. You know, you just think The Swordsman, The Fighter. There's been ones like that out there. So you think to yourself, okay, yeah, what well, makes this one so special? I'm going to get into that. So with South Korean films, I've been a long time fan of South Korean films. And in all honesty, my honest opinion, I believe that the South Koreans are the best filmmakers in the world. Now, that's a huge statement that, you know, uh, you're probably thinking, what? How? Um, they can do comedy. They can do action. They can do uh, espionage. They can do horror. They can do um, uh, period pieces, epic films, martial arts films, you name it. And whenever they do it, they do it so well. Uh, it probably won't have the best choreographing, but they can make anything bloody good. And this goes with this film, Swordsman. Uh, a young swordsman, very fiery, very, you know, hugely talented, um, was, you know, like a, a protector for the king. And during the Qing dynasty, uh, when they, they the Joseon, they, they would refer to the, the, the Qing uh, invaders, um, and that would be the Chinese invaders, or if it was the Manchurians, it was the Mongolians, it was whoever it was coming in, you know, uh, into the country and invading, basically. So that's why they said that, invaders. And this young swordsman now, he's uh, partially blinded. Uh, some years go ahead in time. You know, he's now living a quiet life uh, with his daughter. Through politics, corruption, um, everyone's out to save themselves basically and just, just save their families. His, his daughter gets kidnapped and by traffickers, human trafficking. And he just goes on a rampage to find his daughter. Now there's a bit of a twist and turns in this film, uh, which are really good. Uh, the story isn't the most outstanding story, but it fits the bill. It does what it needs to do because it's all about the action and the charisma in this film. Um, and that's one thing that I look at. You know, a lot of people that would compare uh, the fight scenes with, you know, whenever I say these have got absolutely fantastic fight scenes, but someone always takes something and think, oh, well, if this fight scene... You know, it was okay, but it's still not as better as that film, or it's still not as better as this film. This, the, the sword play in this film is absolutely brilliant. Um, especially there's a scene where he takes on about 10 to 15 ninjas. Uh, the intensity with the action directing and the cinematography really counts when it comes down to action. Now you can have long takes when it comes down to uh, filming action scenes or fight scenes. And it can be, it can drag out too long. It can become very long-winded and you can start to lose interest a lot of the times. That happens with me. I'm not sure about you guys, but that happens with me. This film does not do that. This film gets down to the point and you know, they'll, they'll show you some classy stuff, but with great framing, great pacing, the choreography as well. And what I always look at a choreography in a film or a fight scene is where two opponents are different from one another. Now you think to yourself, yeah, Tarek, that happens all the time. That's how you get fight scenes in a film. One guy faces off this, 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 this end boss, like a video game, you know, he's gonna be different, he's gonna have a different style. But a lot of the times with a lot of films that have come out recently, I'd say within the last five years, the fight scenes are so repetitive because they come up against one guy who's ta who starts off like he's some some badass that you, oh my god how's this guy how, how's the main guy gonna beat this bad guy now but then when the fight keeps going on it's like okay well that guy got a strike on him he got a strike on him and it just it, it tends to just drag out too much until it starts building up towards the the, the final segment of the fight and it can get really bloody or it can just get absolutely ridiculous and you think to yourself okay when is this going to end good news guys with the swordsman it is not like that so anyway let's go to um I've, I've, 
let's just go to it. This actually has um, an actor actor by the name of uh, Jang Hyuk. So he's a Korean heartthrob and he's in Volcano High. Volcano High I saw years ago. It was actually one of the first South Korean films I had seen. And I forgot who was actually released by it. I'm not sure it was Hong Kong Legends because I don't know why Hong Kong Legends would be releasing that. But I think it was or it might have been Cine Asia. I'm not sure. But Volcano High was one of the first South Korean films that I saw at that time when they were being released here in the UK. Along with, um, I think it was Bachinmu and it was uh, Warrior. Uh, Warrior out of those three, Volcano High, Warrior and Bachinmu. Warrior, absolutely brilliant film. Um, but yeah, this film then, and it also has the main bad guy in this film is... Joe Taslim. Uh, he so Joe Taslim is he's, he's no stranger to action. Um, originally a judo expert, and then went on to just you know broke into films. Uh, first time I saw him was in The Raid, Part One, and then uh, a lot of you guys will be familiar with him from other films um, that came out uh, Netflix originals, I believe they were. Uh, he's also played Sub Zero in the new Mortal Kombat film. Now. I won't go on say too much about more comment, but though Joe Taslim, considering that he's Indonesian, but he's speaking full-fledged, fluent uh, Korean in this in this film is absolutely brilliant. You think to yourself, guy, man, this this guy is talented, and 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 the truth is he is because in this film you also see his swordplay. He pulls off um, a swordplay hand to hand, uh, the different languages. The guy's committed, extremely talented, and I can't wait to see more of what this guy has to offer. I mean, we've seen so much already, but it's gonna be absolutely fantastic uh, when people see, you know, these films and they're like, oh my God, that's that guy who was in The Raid. Oh my God, that was a guy, who, he played Sub-Zero, didn't he? And you see he's speaking Korean in this film, and it's so fluent. And I, I thought I thought that was a brilliant performance. And um, I would say not going on too much because the story isn't too vast. It does have a couple of twists in it, a couple of turns, a um, couple of, oh, wow, okay. Those kind of moments. But the action, the action is what it's all about. And Jang Hyuk, the main guy, he performs brilliantly. And there were some really good moments in this, you know? those times when you see in a film like oh why are you letting that that guy live that guy deserves to die he don't have none in this right the guy's just going to go straight up dead no question none of this business dead anyway <laughs> going back to it if you don't know now you know check out the swordsman you will not be disappointed i got this for about 10 pounds blu-ray it is worth the pickup for the for the quality of action filmmaking alone. It'll be a good introduction to South Korean cinema uh, for you guys. If you if you're not into it yet, or if you just catch a film here and there, get yourself this film. I recommend it. But anyway, um, this is Lockdown Stash. I am Tarek. Till next time. Peace.